Welcome to the Appliance Educator Podcast, presented by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath, attainable luxury designed in Lake Tahoe. On today's podcast, we're joined by Jimmy Driscoll and Colin Shaw from the Behind the Studs Podcast. Welcome back to the Appliance Educator Podcast. Today, we're joined by two awesome guests. We are joined by Jimmy. Hey, how you doing? And Colin. Hello, everyone. From the Behind the Studs podcast. And then, as usual, I've got my partner in crime here, Nick, hey, from the Appliance up, Educator. So, just to start right hey, off, guys, hey guys, give the audience kind of an idea of uh, Behind the Studs, who you are, and what got you into podcasting. Oh, I'll tell question. you a little bit. Yeah. Well, first of all, Jimmy and I have known each other for like over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we go way back. Uh, we work together on many projects um, and remain friends. Uh, despite of working together. So it, that turned out pretty good. Um, so I was basically uh, doing like blogging for my website. And then our producer, Marissa, she said, you got to do a podcast. And I said, I don't want to do a podcast. I said, you got to do a podcast. I said, okay. So I said, I, and I was bored out of my mind. I was like, oh, this is so tough to get through. And then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, who wants to listen to me talk for like a half hour, 45 minutes? I don't even want to hear myself talk for that long. So then one day I was like, you know what? If Jimmy would do it with me, this would be, this could be a lot of fun. So I, I just brought it up to him and he's like, yeah, let's do it. So, and here we are, we're in our fourth season right now. So yeah, we're yeah. For four season. And yeah. It's, it's been, it's been going well. You know, we're, we're very fortunate. We have a lot of great guests that come on. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And we, you know, we try to educate as best we can in the home remodeling industry, but we also try to entertain at the same time. So, well, that's not a hard thing to do as no. far as entertaining. We just off the cuff on a lot of stuff as, as a matter of fact, we'll just <clears throat> give you a little, there have been times and quite a few times where we come in and we're very unscripted and we'll come mm -hmm. in and we'll, we got anything to talk about. And it's just like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's yep. do it. And boom. And 30 minutes later, we got a show. Later, we got a show. It's like, all right. <laughs> we get, we get um, like into uh, car talk. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that program that used to be on uh, NPR. NPR. Mm -hmm. And it was just two guys, you know, talking about cars, but they talked about other things too. And it was, it's kind of like, you know, just sitting in, listening in on uh, two guys, you know, that are friends that are just having a conversation. So that's kind of, you know, we did that by accident. We didn't try to be like them. Um, in fact, when we started the podcast, I didn't even know who they were until people started saying we sounded like them. Um, so. But yeah, that's kind of like what we do. Yeah, it's kind of like what we do. We um, we don't have the technology right now to have people call in, um, which we would like to do. We try mm. to do it like with a, a call in time. Uh, the times that we we show this, you know, we do the show. We don't do live. We're not live, of course. We're not live, so that's a problem. That's an issue. But we do get emails and we get you know people making comments. So we try to answer some of the emails that we get, and uh, the 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 positive feedback that we get. We've got a great producer, so she kind of like keeps us in line. Well, she keeps me in line. <laughs> I'm of, always, I'm always in the hot dude. I'm yeah. always in the bow wow house. Uh -huh. It's just the way it is. So. <laughs> They're like, Jimmy, you can't. And I'm like, why? Because you can't. <laughs> ah, so we just do our thing, and it's been four years now. Yeah, going on our fourth year, and um, we're just plugging along, man. It's just like, it's a routine. It's a, it's a, it's something that we really need to vent. Um, not vent, but it breaks up our day, um, mm. especially exactly what, what my what we're both going through with the whole just work is just I, totally freaking insane. Mm. And of course, I just bought a new house. Well, I bought an old house that needs a lot of work, <laughs> and I'm just like, it's new to you. Stupid. <laughs> so freaking tired. And we're happy to be on your show. Guys. We'd love to be yes. on your show. No, we Thank you. So and we definitely want to dive into this new home project, but I kind of want to know, give us a little background on your guys' uh, background in uh, home remodel and repair. Sure. Well, I started off, believe it or not, in the hotel industry and then went into food and beverage. And then obviously the next step would be home remodeling. So that's what I did. Um, I woke up one day and I said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I was working corporate America, suit and tie, the whole thing. And the guy that was in charge of my maintenance department at the hotel I was at, uh, he's like, let's just open up like a handyman business. And I'm like, eh, all right. I did rough framing when I was in high school. I loved it. Thought it was a lot of fun. I said, sure, let's do it. So he made it about three months. And then his wife said, you're going back to work and getting a steady paycheck again. And uh, I was fortunate enough that I could say, you know what, I'm going to hold on to this and, and keep doing it because I was enjoying myself. 
So 15 plus years later, um, you know, I'm, I'm still doing it. We, I still have my handyman division, uh, but I also have Shaw Remodeling, which is a, you know, home remodeling where we do additions and kitchens and bathrooms and some of the larger type projects. So we've been doing that for about 15 years and uh, we're here on the shoreline of Connecticut and uh, it's been, it's been busy and been crazy, but it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Jimmy. I started out. All right, I'm going to divulge something here that you don't even know about, which I'm going to divulge right oh, now no. to these guys. <laughs> no, it ain't bad. It's got uh-huh. nothing to do with prison because I never. You guys been have there. a mute button or anything that no. you guys can. No, no. Okay. we want the juicy stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. So basically, to be honest with you, um, I never thought I was going to be a carpenter. Um, I was actually, I had my sights set on to being an actor or to being a, a singer in a rock and roll band, and I did both. So when I turned 26, 1986, I ended up moving to New York City and um, I got involved with a rock and roll band, which ended up getting signed to Chrysalis Records. I was in a band called Trouble Tribe and I was the lead singer of the band and we toured the country and I was on MTV and I had hair down on my ass and it was a freaking great time. Yeah. But in the process of getting from A to B, as you know, you have to do your, you got to do your due diligence and you got to work. Um, basically, what I did was, um, I had to get a job. I got a I got a job as a tech at uh, the Palladium nightclub in Manhattan, uh, which spawned off into other things but later on. But in the meantime, I was a tech guy and I needed to make more money. So I ended up um, putting in replacement windows in commercial buildings, which was freaking crazy. And then I ended up going to um, it was an ad in the paper out in Long Island for this guy. The guy's name was Jack Luckman. Uh, I actually... I got his name on the album. His, his nickname was Excitable Boy. And I answered an ad that he had in the newspaper looking for a guy who, you know, a carpenter's helper. And so I, I called him up and I said, hi, listen, dude, I don't know much. I really don't. I don't know much. And I, uh, <laughs> so I ended up, I said, I don't know much, but I'll tell you what, I want to learn and I'll be on time for work every day. And he goes, you're the guy I want. Come on down. And embarrassingly enough, when I started work for him, I says, before I even start, I, dude, I don't really don't even know how to re- read a tape measure correctly. And he goes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So he showed me and he showed me everything what to do. And um, I was really proud of my work because we did finish work. We did skylights. We did, which is a very funny story. But anyway, we'll get into that later. <laughs> but I learned so much from this guy. And then um, I just kept that carpentry skill and after that, and then I did the rock and roll thing. I ended up becoming production coordinator in Manhattan. I ran four nightclubs. I had 40 guys working under me. And um, I just got a phone call from one of the guys who ran the lasers the other night from Hawaii. I got to talk to him tonight. But anyway, my life has been very, very interesting. And I kept the carpentry skills. And when I ended up d- decided after I did the whole rock and roll tour thing and did this and the other thing, um, I, was, I think I was the only, I think I was one of the only musicians who could eat steak on the weekends while everybody else was trying to eat peanut butter and jelly and tuna fish because I had a trade. I learned a trade. So when I moved to Connecticut, I ended up joining the Carpenters Union and then uh, learned a lot more there. And then I started a handyman business, too. And then I met Colin uh, when I moved to Connecticut. And then we rejoined each other at Monroe Muffler. Remember oh, that? Yeah, I we remember. Yeah, our cars fixed. Like, what are you doing? He goes, I got a handyman business. I go, what are you doing? I go, I got a handyman business. I said, <laughs> Oh my God, we should do a handyman business together. And but a bing. <laughs> we did it. And yeah, we did. It. Right. Yeah. And still friends. We're still friends. <laughs> so he went on to bigger and better things. And I did I kept it small. And um, he's got a bigger crew than I do. And um, we don't I don't brag about he don't brag about it, which is really nice. Um, but we still are friends. And he said, you know, he gave me some side some of his work and I I'd refer him to other jobs. And then he's just so freaking busy and I'm so freaking busy. We do the podcast and uh, Mm. laugh every Tuesday afternoon. Yep. Even if it's at my expense. (laughs) Usually is. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So we don't, we have no regret. I mean, I mean, our lives have been good. I mean, I could write a book. I probably will. Um, and every day is an adventure. You know, we get up every morning. I creak a little bit. I don't know if you creak. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. But hey, it's a new day. It's Connecticut is. He wants to get out of here. Um, I'm going to be here for a while. He wants to go to Caribbean. Yeah. Uh, not, not a huge fan of Connecticut. So I like or to, New England. So I like I like warm. So that's well, a, where are you guys anyway? We're in Reno, Nevada. So we get the warm and the cold. Oh it's my beautiful. God. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's just oh, like, what a place to be. So beautiful. Most most of the year. Great. Really? Shit. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Oh. Good for you guys. Oh my God. You ever been to Connecticut? No, 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 I can't I, say I have either. Yeah, good. good. They're gonna get off the call. plane, look around, and go. Okay, yep. Like Gotta gophers, go. like gophers, get right back in a hole. <laughs> hey, don't, don't pull that, don't pull that plane away. We're, we're, all right, we're going yep. right back on. We're yep. Good. Stick your head out. Say I've seen it. Boom, I'm out. Oh, it sounds pretty kismet though for you guys to kind of cross paths, and so you know, just the the natural progression of things of just uh, both of you handymen hitting it off. The natural chemistry is apparent. Let's dive into a podcast, and then uh, what brings us to the to the new property and the project? That's what we really want to dive in with. Nick's got himself yeah, into a new I home just as well. bought a new house, my yeah. first. Uh, well, and it's yeah, it's a project for sure. So I want to share the woes of your old house. <laughs> All right, my old house. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Yeah. Go get it. Go get a Guinness or a beer right now. Go. <laughs> I got mine. I'm drinking. You can't see it right now, but I got like a, I got a warm Guinness that I got out of the car, and I was like, I'm gonna drink while I'm talking to these guys so i'm drinking guinness right now perfect yeah I love it. at home get settled in get yourself yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Above us, right above us is actually our whiskey decanter so it's, yeah it's almost oh, is that what those are how old your house uh it was built in the mid 50s oh all right pretty much when you beat by about <laughs> i got you beat by about 250 years on mine <laughs> <laughs> give, give us oh, yeah. details what's uh what's the property um what we what, what can we imagine in our head with it um, think of Gone with the Wind after the Civil War. <laughs> and after then, it's burnt down? And then, then the Alamo started, and it ended on my front lawn. <laughs> and so then they were like, all right. <laughs> then they were like, Driscoll, fix it. Yeah, clean, clean slate then is what we call that. That's it. Yeah, right. awesome. There you go. Ready to go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a case. No, I'm going to need a truck of Jameson before I even start this job. <laughs> the house was built in the, uh, they were saying in 1783s, but now we're finding out it was like early 1800s. Um, uh, it's a, they said federal, or it's a Georgian, and um, just trying to make up their mind what it really is. It's a beautiful house, has, it scared everyone else away from people buying it because it needs a paint job. But the bones are really, really good. Um, the windows are in pretty good shape. Some need to be glazed, which I will do. Um, I got doors that need to be fixed. I've, I am now becoming really good at fixing old doors, interior old doors with the old box plates inside with the little like springs and stuff. Mm -hmm. I got to take them apart and put them back together. And so I'm getting pretty good at that. Fixing though, that's a new challenge for me. And um, fighting off the spiders in the basement and in the attic. Um, but I just got painting to do. We just excavated outside, get rid of all the old trees, dead stumps. Oh, my God. I have never seen bittersweet, uh, which is a weed that we have up here. I have never seen a root so thick, dude. Really? They're usually really thin and mm -hmm. they're orange looking. Mm -hmm. These fuckers are like, <laughs> like, like bats. I mean, I'm serious, like stump. I mean, oh, my God, like mm -hmm. roots. And that's the only way to say it. Not like, oh, these little things. No, that's what they are. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> so, and it's like, I got to use an excavator to get them out. And it's like, I break them and I snap them. And it's just like, and it's like, just keeps going. It's just like a quarter mile of <laughs> root. Okay. Pissing me off. So I'm just venting. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> um, I have a feeling. Um, I feel similarly to you with foxtails because my house was just oh. covered in bushes of foxtails and I have a little dog. She's a little mini poodle and it just yeah. caught in her fur and it can go inside of her pretty easily. So uh, I sweat mm. my ass off like all summer long trying to get half of the backyard done. And so it was safe for her to just use it to go to the restaurant. Did you rent, rent a machine? Go get a machine and just tear it up. A machine. Really? <laughs> rent like an excavator. Get in the backyard or whatever you got to do and just tear all that shit up. Get it out of there. So what I did, I rented one every weekend. Got in there and just blah, ripped it all up. Ripped up the briars, ripped up all the weeds, ripped out the stumps. Um, 
I had a guy who came in who had a stump grinder next door. He had a bobcat. It's just, it actually cost 20 grand, this machine, this piece that goes on the front of your bobcat. And it looks like a top and it spins and it goes in and it burrows the stump. It just tears it up. Mm. So it's just like if you hit like a root canal, it just goes in there, rips the mm. whole thing apart, all apart. Uh, rather than just grinding it out with the wheel, which mm-hmm. would just go right mm-hmm. to this. If this goes right into the ground, it's fantastic. Mm. Nice. So I had your, we both have issues with, with weeds and uh, all that other crap. So I got, I got rid of it. Yeah. Did you buy feel property? much better about it, but it's, it's a challenge. Yes. Did you probably well, we got an acre live in it? Yes. Or is it flip? I'm jumping ahead of you. I'm sorry. What did you say? It, did you buy your home as your like forever kind of retirement home or to live in or just to kind of flip and do a project? Not to flip, uh, to live. And then when the time comes where we're just, we're, no, I'm going to be gray soon. I can't say old cause I'm there. So I'm going <laughs> to say when I'm just incapable and I'm just, I'm my, my main staple of diet is oatmeal. Probably going to move after that. Uh, cause you got a lot of stairs too, right? One set of stairs, which sucks because they're pretty looking, but the risers are eight inches mm. at the, t- so your body, your brain is used to maybe seven and a half tops, mm-hmm. seven and a quarter. So you're hitting an extra half inch and believe it or not, now I'm used to it. Mm-hmm. But in the beginning, I'm like, why the hell am I so tired by the time I get to the top of the stairs? And I did trip once up yeah. top and that sucked. Yeah. And, um, the runs are not 11 and a half. Mm-hmm. The runs are like, oh, 10 and three quarter, maybe 11. Oh, so wow. your toe, your foot goes, off goes the over edge. the yeah. edge. Yep. Yep. So if you're, and it's, it's, there's no rug on it. It's semi gloss. It's really beautiful wood, but you got to be careful, man. If you go down there on your, huh, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to live to tell about it. I'll tell you that much. It's a long way down. And uh, no. this house is in a, a historical area of Connecticut, right? The people who own the house before us, uh, let Patterson, um, the woman had the house protected. So she put it on the historical district. So it's registered. So we want to do some work. And I was like, you have to go through the historical commission, which is they were awesome. Um, of course, I charmed them a little bit, but I told them I really loved the house and they were freaking awesome. And uh, they were really good to me. And just, you know, a couple of things that I have to do, which are which are minor. But um, my biggest my biggest hurdle, I think, on this house is going to be getting the windows that are going to be historically accurate because I have to use divided light on the outside. It doesn't have to be so much on the inside. Then no one's going to know. Mm-hmm. But on the outside, it has to be divided light. But for me to get the windows, dude, mm. we have a we have a window company here. Uh, it's Lansing. So they're, they're national. I don't know if you have them out there. But one of the windows they carry is Majestic. And my buddy Dave just got majestic trying to get majestic windows he got pushed all the way pushed down into january now that does those windows me. yeah but so, you go, go with the marvin integrity is one of those they're they're way out there oh, yeah. well i wouldn't even touch marvin windows but i mean i probably go with an anderson just to yep. get through it yeah just to get through it wood on the inside clad on the outside you know yeah yep yeah, so for us, I mean, you know, the the pandemic has been really tough with oh, getting, sucks, you dude. know, uh, materials in and stuff like that. But you guys dealing with appliances, you know, f- very very well what the th- that issue is all about. Oh yeah, supply chain seemed to hit everybody this last year. Yeah, we saw prices and wait times just go through the roof for everything, and it's coming back a little better now. But so many people are in a backlog. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I yeah, just some of my customers, I don't usually, you know, buy the appliances for them. I have them go and buy, buy them on their own. Uh, but one lady, she's waiting on a, uh, uh, dishwasher and she's number 300 on the list. Whoa. Waiting for her, waiting for her <laughs> dishwasher to be made and sent. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a few months. <laughs> I don't know how many they can do at a time, but I know it's not much. Well, buy a, buy a stack of Playtex gloves, baby. Cause that's <laughs> the way it's going to go for a while. <laughs> Working on a property in the historical district and, and from that era too. I mean, the thing that jumps to my mind right away, plumbing and electrical, what, what are you looking at and what are you planning to do? Is it something you, you take down to the basics and, and just redo completely or, or what's the, well, God bless this guy. Cause there was not a lot of good things they had to say about him when he sold us the house. 
but he updated the electrical. So I got a new 200 amp service, not that old new septic system, which was put in 2005, a uh, new boiler, which went into 2015. Um, and he put in a hot water heater, uh, a hybrid hot water heater, which is great, which I have up in New Hampshire too, which has like, it, it takes the humidity out of the air and it converts it to energy. I don't know how it does it, but it's pretty cool. So it takes some of the moisture out of your basement and it converts it to the energy, to hot energy, to oh. hot water. Um, you weren't so all, in this neighborhood. the electrical, yeah, the electrical in the house is not that bad. There's a couple outlets that are a little sketchy and he's got one breaker downstairs. He's got tape on and I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm really gonna, I'm gonna find out what this is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trip this sucker up and see what's gonna arc in the house. This will be, mm. should be fun. Um, so I don't really worry about that, which is really good, but uh, we've got old fireplaces, man. One with the beehive ovens. They're just, they're gorgeous downstairs. But you can't use them though. You'd have to put a liner in them because if you're not, you try to light a fire in them, you're gonna, you'll burn the house down. I think it was built in the 19, um, 1800s or early 1900s. It's a cast iron, it's a cast iron stove mm -hmm. and you would put wood or coal in it and cook on it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. We have one of those. That's awesome. So we've carted that. Yeah, we've carted that thing everywhere. Mm. You know, it is so heavy. It's cast iron. It comes in three pieces and then some. It takes three or four people to move it. It's a pain in the ass. So we found a company and we'll get we'll get these people on our show. Mm -hmm. They're from Boston and they convert them into gas, gas stoves as like, uh, you know, to warm the house, not to cook on them, but okay. to warm on. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, of course, they convert it. Conversion kits they put on them. Mm hmm. Trying to get a hold of them. This is fun. <laughs> I'll text you back. Never text us back. <laughs> Just waiting. So I'm waiting on that. That's been a little bit of a uh, hearing experience. Once we get it in, I'll, we'll, I'll post it on the yeah on the Good. on the website stuff. Good. So that's another thing I'm adding. You know, so it's just painting the house and getting the house ready on the outside. Um. But yeah, it's a challenge. Now, what about you, 1950s? What's going on with you? Well, what I think you got my, going on? My, the inside of my house was flipped in 2017, so it's all pretty new on the inside. Um, my biggest problem mm -hmm. is the siding of my house is that asbestos, asbestos cement kind of siding. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. it's chipping and cracking in a bunch of places, so either having to figure out what I want to do with that, whether it's just go over with like T11 or some other kind of material, I don't know yet, but that's, and then also my driveway is pretty much dirt. <laughs> I think there was concrete there maybe when they first built it, but getting someone to pour concrete right now is pretty almost near impossible in, uh, in our, right, so let me yeah. help you. Let me help you in your driveway real quick. Um, <clears throat> you can get somebody with an excavator and just tear all that, tear it up just loosen it up and just compact it down, get somebody to do that mm -hmm. and then have them get, I don't know how many yards you need, but get pro just get process aggregate, which is a stone with stone dust. And what's really good about it is when you drive on it, it packs down and it packs in really good, but it also moves with the earth. So you don't really have to worry where you are because you're in a very dry area. You don't really have extreme weather changes like we do here. So if you can get process, I don't even get process aggregate where you are. Mm -hmm. But if you can, you lay that in, that's your driveway, bro. That's all you really need, honestly. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is it may hurt a little bit if you walk bare feet to go out to the, to the driveway. I don't really know what you have as far as your, your yard goes. But if that's, that's a great temporary fix until you can get hot top. Mm -hmm. That works. That stuff works out really, really good. So that'll like help you a lot. Rose, granite kind of stuff. It's it's stone. It's like half inch stone, maybe okay. three quarter inch stone, and it's got the stone dust in it. So it'll fuse together. Once you, when you lay it, it's got stone dust in it. Mm -hmm. Once you lay it down and they pack it down, it's solid. You know, you it can rain. You could it could be a downpour. It, it it's not going to wash out on you. It will not wash out on you. It'll stay there. Huh? And if it was in New England, if the ground heaves, it'll move. It'll move with the ground, but it won't heave is what I'm trying to say. It'll go back to where it's got to go. It works really, really good. We've been, I've been using that for a long, long time. Um, now, as far as that, is, this is a joke, too. The asbestos siding you have on your house, I have to tell you, man, I, I, I did a lot of repairs when I was on Long Island working for that guy, Jack. 
uh, when it was before it was like poo pooed. Mm -hmm. I I know you're not supposed to, but oh my god, it's what are you gonna do? It it doesn't when it breaks, it just breaks. There's no particles in the air. There's no fibers outside of it. You you never see it looking like. No, I mean dealing. You know, we we have a lot of it. uh around up here um so you know if you're you're taking up tiles that have a different story that's a much different story you know in the fresh air with the wind blowing yeah you're not really breathing in as much of that dust um do you guys uh where you are like here in connecticut a homeowner and it costs them like 200 bucks 250 dollars for the disposal or they have to call you know a remediation company which would be like five thousand dollars It'll, it'll kill you, man. Yeah. I don't know. You. Do you guys have that option out there? Do you know? Or Yeah, no, there is the option of you doing it yourself and getting rid of it. Um, otherwise, yeah, the contractor would probably do yeah. it. Well, expensive. Put it in... <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so expensive. Just wear a, lot wear a of... mask. Just wear a mask. 19, 1950s, kind of like the foundational when they really started to build like a lot of the classic neighborhoods out here. And then the rest of the stuff's kind of suburb, a lot of ranch style homes, 80s, 90s style so it's not as common out here with a lot of the homes but mm-hmm. okay. a lot, definitely a lot of the classic homes. Homes. Yeah. Homes yeah yeah right yeah, yeah you'll see is your house a victorian no it's just a small um three two it was converted into a three two from a i guess it must have been a two two at one point but uh yeah they converted the garage into a third bedroom but uh yeah cool it's it's a great starter home there you go. Yeah. yeah so that's big. not your uh, your lifetime home. No, no. Mm. For that. But it, yeah, that's it's kind of near the college. So eventually, I think I'll rent it out to you know students in five years or something when I'm ready to move on. That's a, that's a great idea. That's a yeah. great idea. Yeah, right, right out to students. Yeah. Yeah. You, you get the parents to co-sign for it. Yeah. So if there's anything that happens to it, you just charge the parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Absolutely. Don't bother me. Don't don't even put windows in. Just make plywood. <laughs> just do plywood windows. <laughs> Our plywood windows uh, too. With uh, with all the with all the people moving from like California and, and relocating to just rent and just property value in general is skyrocketing. Are you guys kind of seeing the same thing out there in Connecticut? Because oh yeah. In- yeah, because we've got yeah we've got New York you know, being so close to us. So yeah. a lot of people were coming out of the city and, you know, getting to, you know, the suburbs out here and, you know, finding a house and, you know, with COVID and everything else, they're still telecommuting. So they're not, they don't need to, you know, get down into the city as often or even at all at this point, you know, they're still able to just do everything, you know, right from their house. So we, you know, it, it got so crazy. And I'm sure you could probably, you know, feel the same thing out there by what you're saying, but, you know, you put your house on the market within a day, it was gone. And it was well over asking price and it was as is no inspection. And, you know, you just couldn't touch property around here. It was just, you know, all the, all the people from New York were coming in with cash, you know, and people from around here are trying to buy the house, you know, with a mortgage, but you know, it doesn't appraise for the right amount. So you can't get a mortgage for the, for the actual cost of the home. So yeah, it was a little, it was crazy. It's starting to calm down here now. Um, You know, things have kind of slowed down a little bit, but still remodeling, very busy. Mm. Yeah, very busy. Yeah, here is just such a shortage of uh, inventory here, and with yep. the massive amount of people shifting over, they can't just they can't build enough out here. Yeah, yeah. same here. Yeah, right? every New York is just yeah, we're saturated too. We're on the shoreline, so New York pandemic, COVID stuff was selling just like Colin said. People were buying it sight unseen, paying way over the asking price, mm-hmm. and you know, a couple couple horror stories about that with other people buying houses. And, oh my God. I mean, not even going through the inspections, just buying it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, live and learn, live and learn. Hey guys, Drew from the appliance educator podcast here. And I just wanted to take a minute out to talk about our amazing sponsor, Z line kitchen and bath. You've heard the guests and the hosts talk about this amazing brand and all the attainable luxury that they create right here in the heart of Lake Tahoe, USA. From freestanding ranges to ventilation, dishwasher or microwave, to everything you'll need to complete your next bathroom project, Z-Line Kitchen and Bath is bringing luxury into your next project. Yeah, what's the, so what's it's the been a little thing you too. saw someone get into sight sight on just getting into a home. Anything really stand out as? Uh, oh yeah, dude. 
products like uh, septic or uh, septic or mold, mold problems, bad mold problems in a house. Like it's going to cost them thousands and thousands and, you know, you know, double mm -hmm. figures on re removing the mold septic systems that have to be replaced, you know, people buying it saying it's foundations that are cracked. Um, uh, chimneys falling apart, you know, things like things that really have neglect on them that need to be re really repaired, which were, you know, 10, 15,000, you know, 20,000 jobs and the people have bought the house and now it's yours, babe. There you go. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So you, that comes across once in a while, you yeah, know, certainly. flooding basements, you know, those projects basements, uh, full on replacements past the point of repair even. Correct. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to be said for a home inspection, you know, you know, doing what we do for a living, you know, we've kind of got a love hate relationship with home inspectors, but uh, for the most part, I mean, they're, they're finding things that, you know, you need to know about, you know, uh, how old's the roof, how old's the windows, you know, the, the, the heating system, cooling system, all that sort of stuff. You just need to know that information before you buy a house, you know, unless you just got unlimited amount of money, then I guess it really doesn't matter. <laughs> I am this shambled ass house. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had mine inspected when I bought it. The guy looked at it and he goes, I go, what do you think? He goes, eh, new furnace, new roof. I'd buy it. I said, oh, okay. Thanks go. for your help. <laughs> yeah. And you bought it. And I bought it. All right. Yeah. Go. I'm like, what about these windows, these doors? Ah, don't worry about those. <laughs> said, okay. Sounds like I don't know who you're working for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Jimmy, yeah. so, um, in podcasts about your new house, you talked about how you just bought some new appliances. And since we're the Appliance Educator Podcast, we want to know what did you pick and why, or what were you looking for and why? Is there a specific type of, uh, you know, range that you needed or appliances you needed in the kitchen that weren't there? And uh, what did you look for? All right. So I think I mentioned before, I don't know if you have a company out there, but we have a company called Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, they took... They were, and I can't say enough about them. They were amazing because uh, they will bring a consultation. They'll have a consultation to bring a guy out there and he measures to make sure what fits. Okay. And what they'll do is they have such a large inventory uh, already because um, that's what they do. They can pick things like basically I, we want black appliances. All right. So he'll go through. And they've got good stuff. They've got Samsung, LG, you know, Bosch, some things are Bosch, but all the name brands, they have some of or more of than other appliance companies have. And what they also do is they shop them real quick so you get a better price. So we, and we also hit it just before Labor Day. So there was another Labor Day price. So we got another discount. Um, so the appliances that I saw, you know, I'm happy with them. I saw them. They got good ratings on consumer reports. I'm like, okay, let's get it. You know, I'm fine. Um, just to let you know, appliance guys, um, refrigerators, they're all the same. They just have different bells and whistles on the front and that's what you're paying for, but they're all the same. It's all the same guts, everything. Um, so we got, we got the washer and dryer. She decided she wanted to go with a gas stove with an electrical oven, I guess. To that point, we got that. That's that's in stock, but we're getting a gas line run into the house. I can't do nothing until we get the gas line run into the house, right. and then we'll get the stove. So that's waiting to come in. Uh, the refrigerator was a challenge because it's a shorter one, smaller one, and um, that has not come in yet. So we have to wait on that. But it's a beautiful one, and um, anytime now, anyway, any anytime. We didn't try to go like a lot of some, excuse me, some people um, like the best dishwasher out there is Bosch because mm -hmm. it's, it's expensive. Do you but guys they're, agree? They're, they're definitely up in there. In that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But they're expensive, extremely expensive. And they're ex super, super quiet. Yep. But the backlog on them are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't need to wait that long. I, I, I think Bosch is a great too. Um, but I'm all right. I mean, I can dishwash to me as a dishwasher, just like see how they sound. You can just look at the ratings on them as far as 
how loud are they when the water's running on them and stuff like that. But you know what, to be honest with you again, um, I'm doing dishes and then I walk out of the kitchen. I'm in the living room or I'm up in the bedroom. So I don't really care about the noise mm -hmm. that much. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the so I'm, I'm fine with that. A whole lot of, uh, difference between the two it's like a range from 36 to the really quiet ones to 44 which is kind of on the average scale so yeah the range is not too notable to the everyday ear yeah when we've right. done new installs here the best ones pretty much are you know if you walked out of the room you'd forget it was on and that's kind of to me the you know the, the off the cuff test of is is that the thing you want in your home right all right so yep. so I'll, I'll just give you a quick test all right so you, you buy a house, all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, I got a train, I got train tracks behind. <laughs> and it's like, three o'clock in the morning. Two months go by, you don't even hear them anymore. No. You never hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. You just shut it out. You just shut it down. It's gone. You know? Um, yeah, but you put a styrofoam cup in your back seat and you drive. Oh my God, that's <laughs> You, you'll kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I will road rage. I will, ru I will run into a tree for that. Stop that freaking styrofoam cup. That's like, you know, the, remember the styrofoam coolers you put in the back? Yes. Seat? Yes. Ah, yeah. ah, get out of all. I take that thing and chuck it. <laughs> get so, that out of my car. It's not even recyclable material anymore. You gotta get rid oh, of the styrofoam. Throw that Come out. On. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Oh, it's bad for the planet. Right. Let's get rid of right. it. Right. Oh, that's so, how you make a terrorist talk. You put your grandmother in there and you put a styrofoam cooler in there with something that rolls around in it. You put it right against the face. Nice. Oh, he'll be like, he's in the cave. He's done. Or he's in the cave. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, back back to the kitchen too. It, it yeah. sounds like you replaced your full your full suite there. Were you? Did you do like yeah. a remodel? Did you reset? Kind of say, hey, I want a thirty six here. I'm going to do ventilation here, or or were you kind of working with the countertop layout that was in place? We used the countertop layout that we had, which was a butcher block, oh, and right. it was like, and I was. It's a small kitchen, and I have to say, when we got in there, I'm a man of simple means. And I'm, I'm good. And she was just like, oh, this kitchen is way too small. Oh, my God, we got butcher block. And then, believe it or not, she went over, stripped all the polyurethane off the butcher block. And, and then we, she put down uh, tongue oil, food grade tongue oil. Yeah. Did like three coats of that. It's freaking gorgeous. I bet. Butcher block. She loves the kitchen now. I yeah. mean, she loves it. Absolutely loves it. Um, and I love it, too. So. It's really, it's got a little countryish to it uh, with the butcher block and the, we have wide pine floors Oh, nice. and they're in great, in great shape. They're really in great shape. That's um, on track too right now. That kind of supple hardwood look that's, that's right on point right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll tell you what, if you ever can get a hold of pumpkin pine and you get that sanded down there, dude. Oh my God. Oh, and you, oh, that's just like. <laughs> No, people will just like look at it and go, oh, my God, that's it's go it's gorgeous, gorgeous wood. Mm. We had a guy up here in Jewett City that had it. And we, I put it in an old house, a 1700s house. And it was just like, oh, my God, it's like orange. It's got orange and black in it. Mm. It's nothing like it. Yeah, nothing mm. like it. it's yeah. crazy to hear Beautiful. the the years of these houses out east that are made right out here. We're thinking, oh, yeah. Midtown, you know, has some houses in the early 1900s. And we're like, wow, 100 year old house. That's, that's an crazy. old house out here. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. And you got to talk in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What? <laughs> that's the standard. Yeah. yeah. You know, they didn't have the tools that we have today. Uh, they didn't have the codes <laughs> that we have today. And yet they're still standing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. You know, mm -hmm. and when you get into one of those homes and you can get up into the attic and stuff and you can just see how they took, you know, an axe and just, cut the boards, you know, and notched them and fit them together. And, you know, just, I don't know how they came up with those, those tricks, but man, they work, you know, and they've been through so many hurricanes, so many hurricanes and, you know, the newer homes, they're the ones that fall down faster than those old ones. I bring all my carpenters down to my basement. I show them where my, I have two, two uh, chimneys. So they see the fireplaces and the stone and the beams that are in the basement. And I have no really post beetle damage to it. And they're just like, 
oh my God, look at all this work. And it's just like, it's beautiful. Yeah, mm. it's in really, really good shape. And my attic too. My attic is in very, very good shape. So all these years and it's still standing strong. Not, it's not really listing at all. It's in, it's in great, great shape, man. Really great. Shape. Yeah. Those guys, you know, they didn't have the internet or TV. So all they did was work. Just yeah, go back to work on the yeah, basement. Exactly. Right. What else are you going to do? Stare at the barn? Right. Go build God. something. <laughs> if I got to swing a hammer for 15 minutes, I need to take a freaking 20 minute break <laughs> and a coffee and aspirin. Yeah. Are you guys cut all that shit by hand? If a lot of these classic homes are people wanting to go heavy modern on the interior and just keep the outside, or are some people looking to kind of embellish those natural materials and kind of play back into some of the classic structure they're seeing inside? Good question, mm. because I have to tell you, man. Some people who buy an old home already know that they love the house the way it is, and they're just going to accent it and they'll accent it and just make it more a comfortable, make it more comfortable or add a couple things to it. that just just gives it a little pizzazz, but keeps that the old home characteristic in it. I do not like it when they re got the whole thing mm. and it's a modern home inside an old house. It's, it's not right. It's not right. It's not I mean, right. that's not your house to buy, in my opinion. Right. You know, if that's not what you want, um, I, I've dealt with a few 1700 homes too. And, um, you know, the people are like, rip that door out, rip those windows out. And I, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't do it. You know, it's the original glass. It's the, you know, the, everything's original, the trim, you know, you cannot duplicate the trim again. You know, it's just amazing. That's why, you know, when somebody comes in and they want to modernize an old house, it's just, you, you bought the wrong house. Right. You know, you should have found something that was, that was a little newer. Um, and you're just going to get upset with it because, you know, the other things about old homes, like, you know, un unlevel floors and, you know, like Jimmy said, the staircases are different. That, that's probably just going to annoy somebody as well. So, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's an adventure, man. I, I just really can't wait till it's all done. <laughs> I'm done, dude. I'm already, I'm shot. Put a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> So I'm just trudging along now and trying to just get through it and get the bed bedroom set up and the, the living room set up because I really like at the end of the day, I just love to just sit on a couch and not so much just watch TV because I really don't watch TV anymore. It's, it, it's, a, it's a good thing too. Um, I just want to relax in my house. Colin knows one of my favorite things to do, actually, and I'll share this with you guys um, because, you know, just walking my lawn in the morning is just like, wow. You know, you, you, I get grounded to some point. So um, that's some things I love in my house. You know, I really do. Yeah. What do you guys do for relaxation? The same, honestly. I just got into a new home over the summer. And like my biggest thing is like, especially out here, because we're in the desert, is just my lawn, my garden. I, I'm that guy. I'm like, every Sunday, I got to get out there in the lawn. I want to be that neighbor whose lawn always looks good. You know what time I'm going to be mowing. I'm like, <laughs> I take so much satisfaction every morning, pulling out of the driveway to work, looking at my lawn, looking at each lawn in the neighborhood and just being like, I'm up there. I'm in the upper bracket that then I can feel good about myself. Honestly. Good man. Yeah. Drew, I'm right there with you, man. I, I look at my lawn when I pull in and leave and I'm like, Oh, it's so pretty. It's so it's a yeah. strange attachment you get. Cause I'll be like, it is. one hot spot. I'm working on that. That's going to get a little extra yeah. love with the hose each day. Like we're going to make sure that comes yeah. I get so much satisfaction when it's just like, I got people coming over. It's going to be mowed. It's going to be edged. We're, we're going to be looking <laughs> real good here you know and then you go back inside and you're like, i should have i should probably put 20 more minutes in the kitchen but the lawn yeah. is looking good i'm gonna make sure every guest comes outside takes a look you know just take it in well you have a hoa too, don't you i do have yeah. an HOA. Yep. and my, oh, wow. my my like uh yeah, I'm, I'm out in the suburbs. So for me, it's, you know, it's also like, I got my neighbor right there when he sees me mowing the lawn, I'm like shooting him the eyes, like right out the door. Like you see me, bud, like, you, yeah, you need to get on yours too. But, um, <laughs> my big thing is like, I have seen you out here two days. Two day, you yeah, exactly. Wow. But I'm just like, I'm just like, as long as I don't get a letter from the HOA, I'm doing it right. Because you know, there's, there's a, uh, a lot of busy bodies in the group, I'm sure would love to get me on something, but I'm, I'm going to stay one step ahead. That's my mark. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Word, well, what about you, man? What do you do? Uh, oh, uh, 
boy, I uh, am also a DJ and a concert promoter producer. So I don't really have free time. I work my day job here. I, uh, I produce concerts, I play music Mix and the- I just bought a house. So there's no relaxation. He, in he's life. the guy who comes in at like eight in the morning, early, early to work here at the office. And he's like, yeah, I, you know, I got up at five to finish this project this morning and we were doing all the stuff with the cabinets and we were up till two last night and I got to get that done because it's Friday and I've got a thing on Saturday. I, think, I don't, I don't know what this guy doesn't really sleep. It's Dude. pretty, <laughs> it's going to catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, old, how old are you uh 33 it's not gonna answer you just a baby in this world yeah yeah i'm 36 myself <laughs> in puppy <laughs> yeah uh-huh yeah he doesn't <laughs> you guys are both sleep. young yeah well, he they, doesn't need yeah. sleep no no, no. Not, not not get back out right. there i don't want to hear any <laughs> whining or crying <laughs> cut your lawn and shut up <laughs> <laughs> well before get out there and freaking oh. make your music and, yeah <laughs> Well, before we put your new back. handles on your cabinets at two in the morning, he does he get does. it done. Believe me, I hear, yeah, we're I hear doing an story. install video uh, at my house, and I was like, we have to finish these cabinets tonight because I'm not shooting in here with cabinet doors all over the place. So we did it. <laughs> yeah. nice. Before nice. we cut you guys loose, you know, uh, Nick, Nick dug up something pretty interesting. I want to hear your guys' uh, story on this: the mortar rat. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's Jimmy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. Things I've ever done in my life was that whole freaking, I thought run the gamut and I've been there and I, I earned my epaulets, but no, this was like right up there. So this house that I'm property managing and working on, I was, I was getting nervous because we're supposed to, they're supposed to insulate the crawl space in the basement on this house. It's got a sand bottom and it. It's probably two and a half feet from the ground. So you really got a GI Joe this job. So the dry event, which I think, was the original dry event when they first made those dryers was in there and it was split when he found it and showed send me a picture and i was like well i gotta replace and for some stupid reason i thought the dryer event for the dryer it's gonna take one eight foot piece of dry event and i'm gonna connect it to the outside of the dryer and we're gonna go back inside so jimmy decides uh on one of the hottest days of the year that he's gonna replace the dry event which is no vapor barrier in the basement. So all the humidity and everything is down there and they get down in the hall. And I just, tell, I see the neighbor and I say, listen, if I'm not out of here in 45 minutes, you better come looking for me, hit the house, do something. So sure enough, I go in there and I go, I look way down in the middle of the bowels of this freaking house, 25 feet into the house. And I'm like, you could hear me. Are you shitting me? <laughs> So I had to crawl all the way down into the freaking, I mean, crawl. And it was so it was like, so in my elbows, on my knees, in the sand, over this, over that. Uh, I got the dry event, had to connect three dry events together. So I got it all together, sweating. Freaking, I hate putting these dry. You got to put the circle to the circle. You got to super hell. So everything, I finally get it all together, put it there. I got to connect to the dryer thing. And they cemented the dryer vent piece into the center block. So I can't take the old one out, put a new one in. Can't do it. It's there forever. So I thought there was mortar on the top of it. So I went to go move some of the mortar, see if I could jiggle it out. And I go, oh, I snapped some mortar off. No, that wasn't the mortar. That was a dead petrified rat. <laughs> It's been sitting there for at least six or eight years. It was like it was like deflated football that was left out in the sun. <laughs> oh my god, it was a rat taco. Hard taco. It wasn't uh, a, a load bearing decision. They <laughs> in my hand, I had gloves on. I just I today. What else? What else are you gonna throw at me? I left it outside. I just I checked it out like a frisbee. I left it on the lawn. It's still there. <laughs> so that was like that was awesome. That was just no, not awesome at all. Well, guys, I think our time is about up with you. Um, this has been great. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Check, um, uh, let the audience know where to find your podcast, where to find you guys, all your tags. We've got Instagram, other fun stuff. So uh, everywhere. Spotify. Spot, pretty much everywhere. Google Play. Google all, Play. So, yeah. So I mean, you, we've, got, uh, we've got over three seasons now. So if you ever want to binge it, now's a good time to do it. Oh, my God. Can you binge? Oh, you could binge. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
No, it's awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And honestly, oh my God, yeah. we'd, love, we'd yes. love to catch back Thank in you. a couple months. We can trade some more war stories on a different project. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely, yeah. And we'll have you on our show, too, so we can interview you guys. Oh, we'd awesome. love to, guys. We'd love it. Hey, yeah. thank you so much for being on the podcast today, guys. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Take care, guys. We'll right. see you. This has been the Appliance Educator Podcast, brought to you by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow at Appliance Educator for more tips and tricks and advice to keep your home running at optimal performance. If you have any ideas or topics you'd like to hear on future episodes of the show, leave us a comment. Appliance Educator, signing off.